New York Times recently published an explosive report on alleged sexual violence committed by Hamas terrorists against women on October 7th. The story contained testimony from eyewitnesses and first responders who described finding the bodies of murdered women stripped naked or missing their underwear, their hands zip-tied behind their backs. Some survivors said they witnessed the rapes firsthand. Now, the sister of an alleged victim featured in the New York Times reporting has come forward saying there was, quote, no proof that there was rape with respect to her sister in accusing the New York Times of interviewing her family under false pretenses. Just yesterday, the Washington Post published and then deleted a claim by Israel's defense minister that Hamas's plans for October 7th specifically included which commander should rape which soldiers. However, just a day later, the Post deleted their reporting at the apparent behest of their IDF sources, writing that their outlet was, quote, not authorized by Israel to print it. And today, Israeli paper Haaretz reported that, quote, the police are having difficulty locating victims of sexual assault of witnesses to acts from the Hamas attack and are unable to connect the existing evidence with the victims described in it. Joining us now to weigh in is the Gray Zone's Max Blumenthal. Now, Max, welcome to the show. It's good to be here. Now we uh, tried. Good, and, yeah, go ahead, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you couldn't find a pro-Israel propagandist to call me an anti-Semite for the next 15 minutes. Well, look, but if you we, want, I can we, we impersonate aspire, one. I'll do my we best. <laughs> we aspire to balance in the audience. You know that we, of course, did try to reach out and find someone who would defend the way that this reporting has been done. But why don't you start by telling us, Max, why you think that there are some legitimate questions to be raised here about the credibility of some of the accusations of sexual assault that are alleged to have taken place on October 7th? Well, they're not legit. These aren't just legitimate questions. I think we know that this is a gigantic hoax deployed in order to generate international consent for Israel's genocidal rampage in the Gaza Strip, which has left well over 10,000 women dead, uh, as well as at least that many children. That's what this is about. And this actually was deployed first in December when Israel's assault on Gaza started losing popular support among Joe Biden's base, which includes many feminists. Uh, this, this was rolled out as a political propaganda stunt, and we have to see it as such. The New York Times investigation represents the culmination and nadir of this stunt, as this article, as we've demonstrated at the Gray Zone and as other outlets and independent journalists are demonstrating, is false from top to bottom. And now we have this hammer blow to the Israeli propaganda campaign from Haaretz, declaring that the police cannot find victims of sexual assault, and they've gone to the public to ask them to find them. Basically, we want to accuse Hamas of something that will give us political consent to kill women in Gaza. So please find anything you can. And if you go from top to bottom of this article, as we've done clinically and methodically at the gray zone, you will see how each source is easily discredited by real evidence, starting with exhibit A, Gal Abdush, who was killed horrifically on October 7th. And now her sister has come out and said that her family was manipulated by the New York Times into discussing details of her death and not even told that this article was going to allege that she had been raped. And her mother has come out in Israeli media in Ynet and said, we didn't even know she'd been raped until the New York Times approached us and claimed they had evidence. So why isn't Jeffrey Gettleman from the New York Times who wrote this article being asked to be on this program to defend his bogus genocidal propaganda. He should be here or somewhere to defend this article. And if he can't, it should be retracted. Well, we'd be happy to have him on or anyone else who wants to uh, discuss what they think are the merits of this article. I, I want you to respond to um, additional claims in here. Um, uh, partway through, they have the testimony of a 24-year-old accountant identified as Sapir, who says that, um, that this person witnessed heavily armed gunmen rape and kill at least five women. And then there is later testimony from a first responder who says that they found a, a medical person who found a woman, women tie, with hands tied behind their back, bent over 
naked or missing underwear. There were a few of those. Another volunteer medic says 24 bodies uh, had women uh, stripped naked, tied up, and mutilated. Um, I, I take your point about, obviously, I, I cannot dispute how the family has characterized the example that led the piece, but this seems like um, documentation from numerous sources. I mean, we're not hearing the vi from the victims from themselves because they're dead. Let's, how do we know they're dead? We don't know that they're dead. We don't know that there are victims. That's an Israeli talking point. What we, we also know that Israel collected no forensic evidence. The New York Times claims that because of Jewish burial ritual, they could not collect forensic evidence, which means if you question this article, you're an anti-Semite. But let's go through these witnesses, Robbie, that I'm, I'm really grateful you raised because this is the whole meat of the New York Times investigation and of the Israeli propaganda campaign by extension. The 24-year-old accountant is known only as Sapir. They won't give their full name. They claim that they were shot in the back and then were able to observe a group of Hamas gunmen gang rape a woman, then cut her breast off with a box knife, then pass the breast around and play with it. And then they took the decapitated heads of three other women that they had supposedly raped and displayed the heads. We know this, invest this claim is false because there is no record anywhere of women having been beheaded on October 7th. We know the names of all the victims, including victims who were burned beyond recognition through DNA, and none of them are decapitated. So this is completely fake. And this is, this is according to the New York Times, the Israeli police's key witness. Then you have this supposed Israeli paramedic who has been interviewed by other outlets and identified himself as G, Major G, Sergeant G. Uh, he claimed to have found two twins a 13-year-old and 16-year-old girl, one he said had semen on her back, but they neglected to collect forensic evidence. Very unusual recollection there. Um, and that they had been shot with bullets and were tied up in uh, Kafar Aza. There were no 13 and 16-year-old girls found shot with bullets in Kafar Aza. There were two 13 and, uh, and 16-year-old who were found burned beyond recognition with their mother present with them, which would have meant that this wouldn't have been possible. They were the Sharabi sisters. And as we know, as Haaretz has confirmed, as Israeli media has confirmed, as we first um, explained at the Gray Zone, many homes in Israeli kibbutzim were actually attacked with Israeli tanks and Hellfire missiles because there were Hamas gunmen inside with captives. And the Israeli military killed the captives along with the Hamas militants. So why were these bodies found burned beyond recognition? Um, the, 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 we, we have all of these claims and none of them stand up against the actual documented evidence that we have. So what we have is a bunch of innuendo and hearsay, which is being deployed to generate political consent for the real evidence we have, the real images we're seeing of girls like 13-year-old Dunya Abu Mosin, who was killed in her hospital bed at Al Nasser Hospital in Khan Yunus while recovering from having her leg amputated after her entire family was killed in a U.S. airstrike. She, her head was blown off by a tank shell supplied by the State Department without congressional approval. That's the real evidence that this propaganda is being used to bury under. Let yeah, me, can I ahead, raise please. one more point and then I'll let you jump in. So I, I've seen the October 7th footage. I've seen the, the footage of the bodies, the, many of the murders. Um, so, uh, someone, um, two people at least, uh, beheaded um, post being killed, uh, one with a, with a rake or some kind of farming implement. Um, a man uh, murdered, blown up in front of his two young sons. Um, uh, the bodies of people, including women, um, zip tied in all states of distress. The music festival, a just an, an orgy of death and and violence. I, I guess my point being, you know, if you think that the Israeli response is um, somehow the, the the horror of the images are like g lend some justification to a stronger Israeli response. I mean, the things you're describing, even absent any sexual violence. Are, are enough to, right, to like to inflame the passions to want to want justice and revenge for these horrible, shocking murders. And so, so we're and you're not. I mean, you're not. Descri you're still describing really horrific things. I think it's important to be accurate. If the New York Times got this wrong, I'd be the first to call them out. I've called the New York Times out on any number of occasions. I'm not saying you're an anti-Semite at all. Um, 
but I, oh, I, I, I I'm we, relieved. We, we, Thank <laughs> you. Because I, I had a bris and I don't know if you did. Yeah, yeah. I've seen. Uh, I, so anyway, what do you make of that? Well, I'm, I mean, sure. Uh, the, the October 7th Al-Aqsa flood mission carried out by Hamas commandos was designed to capture as many Israeli citizens as possible and use them as collateral to exchange for Palestinian political prisoners and captives, including children in Israeli prisons. That's well known. And they also had a mission to kill as many Israeli soldiers on base in the Gaza division as possible because they were enforcing a crushing 15 year long siege. They were essentially prison guards and many people were killed by Hamas, including civilians on October 7th. There's no denying that. But the Israeli government from the onset has deployed cynical and bogus wartime propaganda, including that 40 babies were beheaded and the US media has lapped it up and shown how, how little critical thinking capacity they have. And one of the organizations that has been passing on this phony propaganda is an orthodox so-called rescue group with no coronary credentials called Zaka, along with its Southern commander, Yossi Lando, who is featured prominently in this bogus New York Times investigation. He is responsible for, quote unquote, confirming the lie of beheaded babies. He is responsible for uh, de deploying the lie that a fetus was cut from a pregnant woman. This is completely discredited. And Tony Blinken on October 31st at the Senate Foreign Relations Committee recited de a deception deployed by Yossi Lando about uh, a family being burned to death and then Hamas gunmen eating lunch while they mutilated their children. So these lies obviously are being deployed for a purpose which goes beyond what we know to be the facts on October 7th because Israel wants consent to do something much more hideous and grotesque than it's been able to do in the past. And the assault on Gaza that I covered in 2014 was shocking enough. So that's what this is about, Robbie. This is wartime propaganda being deployed to carry out a, what I consider and what the South African government considers to be a genocide. And beyond that, it is the, the Israeli plan is clear. To All right, carry let me, out can I just read one more passage, of and then I'll, I'll let you get in here. I, you know, we, again, we tried to get someone else who would uh, more thoughtfully critique you than I, but we are, we are left to, to my uh, non-expertise here. I'm just going to read one more passage from the New York Times, and you can respond. Jamal Waraki, a volunteer medic with the nonprofit Zaka Emergency Response Team, said he could not get his head out of a young woman in a rawhide vest found between the maid's age of the bar. We're talking about the music festival. Hands tied behind her back. She was bent over half naked. Her underwear rolled down below her knees. Yanan Revlin, a member of the Ray's production team who lost two brothers in the attack, said that after hiding from the killers, he emerged from a ditch to look for survivors, found the body of a young woman on her stomach, no pants or underwear, legs spread apart. Um, her vaginal area appeared to have been sliced open. And on and on. And, and that's how Gal Abdush was described as well at the top of the article. She was either killed by an Israeli Hellfire missile, as many motorists were, who are escaping the music festival as the as an Israeli police investigation has confirmed or by a Hamas RPG and she was found with her dress ripped apart with her legs spread outside her car because she was in a state of rigor mortis so just because you find bodies in a certain condition does not demonstrate the thesis stated so confidently at the top of this New York Times article and by the Israeli government itself which is that Hamas carried out a systematic campaign of rape on October 7th, and therefore the Israeli government has the political latitude and permission to do whatever is necessary to eradicate this organization and all its supporters. And according to the British ambassador, the, the U Israeli ambassador to the UK, Sipi Hotaveli, yesterday in British media, Israel must blow up every second house, mosque and school in Gaza because these are all affiliated with Hamas. That is intent to commit genocide. And I see this propaganda as of a part with that. So people were killed on October 7th in horrible ways. I oppose the killing of civilians, but that doesn't demonstrate what the New York Times is claiming. And if they cannot prove this, as we have the Israeli police now acknowledging that they can't even find witnesses, then this article needs to be retracted and Jeffrey Gettleman must be professionally punished. Yeah, I do think, you know, to Robbie's point, I mean, he framed it as uh, 
the very bad things happened. So, you know, the fact that rape has not been proved doesn't mean that very bad things happened. I would flip out in the other way around, as I did in a radar a couple of weeks ago, and say, why? Why would you need to embellish when there was already so much tragedy and murder of civilians that is dem demonstrable on October 7th? And I think that's where you get back to your point, Max, that we saw some of these claims being raised immediately after October 7th that were retracted at that time. I believe it was the LA Times that had to retract a story, an allegation, a line about a rape allegation that was unsubstantiated and they had to retract. And then as weeks went by of the siege and public opinion started to shift, there was literally a moment in time at which you saw a flood of, res of a resurgence of this particular narrative about sexual assault that started, I believe, with Hillary Clinton doing an appearance. Was it on, on The View or maybe yep. somewhere else? And yep. almost like a drop At the of United the Nations. Oh, was that the You're right. You're right. And so I think that's part of what drives some of the skepticism around this. Moreover, I think that what is interesting and so compelling about the study uh, that the investigation you've been doing at the gray zone, um, uh, Max, is that you are making an attempt to use what forensic evidence we do have. It is not true that there is no forensic evidence. The article itself acknowledges toward the end that very quickly, this is a quote, very quickly after October 7th, Israeli officials began gathering evidence of atrocities. So there was evidence gathering that happened, but when there's any in interrogation as to what evidence of sexual violence there is, you're told we didn't collect any because we were too busy looking for survivors, we were too busy burying the dead. Now, that starts to seem rather incredible for the following reasons. Now, I, I want to say outright, I think it's perfectly plausible that sexual violence did occur just because of the prevalence of sexual violence that happens in the context of war. But the specific claim that Israel has been making since the beginning is that there was widespread and systemic sexual violence that was the intent of Hamas as they uh, conducted the Alaska flood um, attack. So that is what I think they're trying to get across, precisely for the reasons that you've articulated, Max, because if they can prove that this was something especially horrible, barbaric, medieval, et cetera, then that cuts against any criticism that, that they ha are, are getting from enacting a similar kind of barbarism in return against Gaza. So I really do think that people should focus on the lack of consistency between the physical evidence that we have from the scene. You, if you claim that a, exactly. two teenage girls were tied together in a certain location and the, there was no reporting of them having been there, if you claim that there was a breast that was cut off of a body and there was no forensic evidence of that breast having been collected, then I do think that, and if, and if there are absolutely no surviving members of the um, atrocities that are being alleged and very few, if any, credible and named witnesses to said atrocities that did survive, then I think it is incumbent on us to ask questions as to why this story that is so flimsy is being pushed instead of simply talking about the real confirmed tragedy of the deaths that we know did occur on October 7th. And, and just two quick points on that. Israel is aimed to portray Hamas an organization which has no intention to attack abroad, which is not a jihadist organization in the traditional sense, which is a group f firmly rooted in Palestinian politics as ISIS in order to gain consent from the United States to do what the United States did to ISIS in the city of Raqqa, in the city of Mosul, which is destroy half the city. So they need to show that Hamas demonstrate that they're irrational, that they killed for the sake of its sheer enjoyment, sadistic, and that they enjoyed raping women. That's part of Israel's propaganda campaign around Gaza. Number two, as time went on throughout Israel's assault on Gaza, hostages, Jewish Israeli hostages began to come out of Gaza. For example, female hostages like 85 year old Yoheved Lipschitz, who said that she had been treated very well. She was filmed um, st uh, declaring salam to her captor and waving goodbye and d did a press conference, which the Israeli propagandists in the government declared to be disastrous. Other female captives have come out and said that they were treated well and that they're while, while it was a horrible experience to be taken captive, uh, their greatest fear was being bombed by Israel. I mean, here's a direct quote by one female captive, a young woman. She said, I was afraid that the army would try to rescue us at any moment because they, it, we've now seen the Israeli army has been killing Israeli captives, thinking that they were Palestinian civilians trying to surrender. The Hamas talked about it, saying the state doesn't care about us. You're not important to the state. What matters is the war. And uh, she you know, so you had these women giving these interviews, even Mia Shem, who condemned Hamas, a female captive who was taken from the Novo Electronic Music Festival, 
did not describe being touched in any way. She said she feared being raped, but she wasn't touched. So this necessitated this wave of psychogenic terror being imposed on the international public through a dramatic rollout campaign at the United Nations with Hillary Clinton, who oversaw the regime change propaganda that Muammar Gaddafi was giving Viagra to his troops to kill and rape women, which was totally debunked and helped lead to the destruction of Libya and the destabilization of entire regions of Africa. She rolls out this propaganda campaign with mm -hmm. neoliberal oligarch Sheryl Sandberg and the Democratic Party's pantsuit feminists at the United Nations, at the Israeli mission of the United Nations. And now here we are at what I think is the denouement of this campaign with the New York Times publishing confidently an article alleging systematic rape and having family members of their key sources now debunk their article along with the Israeli police themselves in Haaretz. Once again, Jeffrey Gettleman mm -hmm. needs to explain how this happened and if he can't offer a good explanation, this article needs to be retracted and he must be professionally punished. Max Blumenthal, thank you for joining us. We care at Rising about presenting a range of opinions, even if they are provocative or controversial. And we would, of course, welcome the opportunity to have on a more pro-Israel perspective, uh, an expert on sexual violence, to uh, discuss this New York Times article. Of course, we would welcome having the author or anyone else involved in its reporting to come on and talk to us about it. Uh, thank you very much, Max. Thanks a lot, Robbie and Brianna.